Hi, my name is Sherman De Silva, and I'm a postdoctoral fellow here at Colorado State University. And I'm Sarah Bentonamram. I'm an assistant professor at the University of Wyoming. And we're excited to talk to you today uh, about our experiences as field biologists for this uh, series on skirts and science conversations. So Sherman, I'm really interested to hear more about your work with Asian elephants. So my work uh, in, in has focused primarily on this one population of Asian elephants in Sri Lanka. And this population lives primarily in a national park in southern Sri Lanka, and it's about 1,200 animals, of which we've individually identified about 300 to 600 animals. We collect information um, on their social behavior. We collect data on their demography, new births and, and deaths and injuries and that sort of thing. But what made you particularly interested in elephants? Actually, funny because I wasn't particularly interested in elephants as such. I was interested broadly in studying social intelligence and communication in animals. And I just kind of went through a list. I made a list for myself of all the different species that are interesting socially and communicate. Elephants seem really interesting from all the research that had been done in African elephants. And I happen to be from Sri Lanka originally, so um, I know that in Sri Lanka, growing up, like we had, you know, there were just elephants around, and that, and it was just always sort of in my awareness that we had elephants in the country. But I was really surprised, actually, uh, to learn that um, Asian elephants are quite endangered. And so um, my other interest was to tr to try to do work that would be relevant to conservation eventually. So of all the different species that I could work on, it made sense to work on Asian elephants because Sri Lanka is home for me in, 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 some res in, in many ways. And um, it seemed like I could potentially contribute something to the understanding of that species. You hear a lot in the news lately about African elephants and a horrible poaching epidemic and how we really have all these conservation issues to worry about with African elephants. Are Asian elephants facing the same conservation issues or are they different? That's a really good question and I'm really glad you asked that. Um, and it's true, so you, you hear a lot of coverage, uh, if there is coverage at all, about the conservation issues for elephants. You hear a lot about the ivory poaching crisis. And um, it is a global issue because the, the trade is global. But that's largely a problem for the conservation of African elephants because African elephants, um, just uh, in terms of their physical uh, attributes, males and females both have tusks. So for African elephants, um, ivory poaching is a critical problem for both males and females. Now for Asian elephants, uh, as a species, the females never have tusks. And so for Asians, historically, the problem has been poaching has focused on males. But you can see already that you know, if, if females are half the population, in some places they're more than half the population because of this poaching pressure, it means that the majority of the population is tuskless. And for that reason, ivory as such is not uh, the, the main threat for Asian elephants. So for Asian elephants, the, the, the issues are a lot more diffuse and um, uh, difficult to pin down. Things like habitat loss, you know, loss of their primary range forests and grasslands that they, that they need. Um, and then going along with that, situations that bring them into conflict with people like agriculture, large-scale plantations, mines, roads, that sort of thing. And so there's a lot of different issues, environmental ecological issues, that come up in, in Asian elephant habitat. And what about yourself? You, so you've spent some time in, uh, in, in Kenya and you've worked with, with African elephants as well as a lot of other species too. So um, tell me a little bit about your experience. Well, I, I'm mostly interested in animal intelligence. So what do animals know about their social and ecological environments? How do they learn? And then once they've learned, how do they use that information in adaptive ways? Uh, and also questions about how intelligence even evolved in the first place. So trying to understand the various factors that led to the evolution of intelligence. So I've been able, fortunately, to uh, ask that question or those types of questions and look at it in a variety of different species and in a variety of really fun places uh, to live. My PhD research was focused on spotted hyenas and all of that work for the most part was done in Kenya and uh, for anyone who's watched The Lion King, spotted hyenas aren't always the most obvious choice for asking about intelligence in animals. 
but yeah. they're really smart and they um, their societies are actually really similar to cercopithecine primates. So those are primates like baboons and macaques, uh, vervet monkeys, things like that. And so hyenas have these really complex social groups. They're large. Uh, they have really interesting uh, social rank dynamics. So uh, in hyenas, all the females actually outrank the males. Mm -hmm. So it's female dominated society. Mm -hmm. And then the young inherit the rank of their mother. And specifically, it's the youngest kid that gets the rank just below that of their mom. So if you think about like the British royal family, mm -hmm. it would be Harry would actually be next to inherit the throne, not William. And mm -hmm. um, so hyenas are really interesting in a lot of respects. So yes, as you mentioned, I also spent uh, some time working with African elephants. Yes. So I spent a year also in Kenya in Amboseli National Park, which is beautiful because you have Mount Kilimanjaro right there. And uh, I was looking at communication in elephants for that project and just trying to understand sort of the, the depth of their different communication signals and whether or not the actual signals that they use in different situations are structurally different. So trying to sort of almost classify words mm -hmm. or phrases. So it's really interesting that there is these different, such different conservation concerns with African and Asian elephants. And I'm, I'm sure a lot of us, myself included, would be really interested in helping. Is there anything that we can do to help Asian elephants? Yeah, so um, actually I founded a nonprofit based in the U.S. Uh, both to help my work and also to help you know, com communicate uh, the conservation issues. Um, and it's called trunksandleaves.org, uh, the, that's the website. And anyone who's interested in learning more about Asian elephants um, and their conservation issues can connect with us there online. So I encourage you to go visit that. Well, this has been great. Thank you. It's been really interesting and fun to chat more. And I'm really glad we had this conversation with Skirts and Science. Same here. And thank you very much for joining us.